Uh, hi, uh, I'm Arjun Parak. Uh, for those that don't know me, I run the Self Learning Networks team um, within Applied Research. Um, so, uh, very pleased to introduce Dr. Ajit Palikard. Um, Ajit is the head of the Asset Management Research Group um, at the Cambridge University Institute of Manufacturing. Um, Ajit's talk will link to the demo shown in uh, Breakout Room 2 uh, later on this afternoon. Um, but also, uh, obviously, all, all of the kind of work across across the project all, all links together. So um, it's kind of closely linked to, uh, say, the governance and risk management work in in room five, and also, uh, you know, uh, various links to the, the other rooms as well. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks a lot for the introduction, Arjun, um, and good morning, everyone. Um, so, uh, in terms of the outline of this presentation, um, over the next 20 minutes or so, um, I'll be I'll briefly introduce the, the theme and how this theme fits into the rest of the project. Uh, I'll then take you through some of the key research activities that we have been doing under, under the theme, and I'll finish off the presentation by briefly highlighting the demos that we have in store for you this afternoon, and the key discussion points that I would like you to have in mind um, when you come um, through those uh, to those uh, demos. Um, so, uh, so what is um, service assurance? Um, service assurance is uh, really the, the application of uh, policies and processes, as you can see in the definition there, to make sure that the service that uh, we offer meets the uh, some sort of required ser service quality level that we set, and it optimizes um, customer service experience. Um, now, there are, there are a number of uh, measures for service quality um, that you can recognize there, um, late latency, packet loss, and so on. But in this theme, we particularly look at how we can monitor and manage the network infrastructure to enable us to deliver those, those metrics effectively. So the way we manage, in, in our terms, the metrics that we use to, to manage and measure, measure and manage this is through a number of infrastructure reliability measures such as availability, mean times to detect, respond, and, and repair. Um, so where do we fit in to, to the rest of this, this project? So um, we have intents, uh, the intense domain that you heard just now at the top, uh, where we define our business objectives in the form of uh, machine understandable intents. And these intents inform the, the service assurance function uh, about the objectives and constraints based on which we can optimize and control the network. Now, these decisions are optim optimized based on striking the right balance between the risks to service assurance and hence the, the link to the risks domain, um, the cost of intervention, and the performance of the network. And of course, um, all of this depends on the data that we gather from the network through the, the knowledge layer at, at, at the bottom. Um, so the objective of this team is to develop tools and techniques to predictively manage the telecoms infrastructure so that we can assure service to our customers. Now, in terms of research, uh, there are a key few questions that drive our research activities. Um, and they are, uh, first of all, how can, we, uh, how can the, the failures in, uh, of critical infrastructure elements be detected? Now, we need to detect these, uh, these failures early enough to tr trigger interventions um, to, to reduce the impact on service. How can failures of um, um, the, these, these failures that I mentioned be predicted with sufficient confidence to enable planned interventions? How can the risk of these um, failures be predictively determined in terms of the impact on service assurance metrics that we talked about earlier? How can interventions to assure service be planned effectively with the, the right balance of cost, risk, and performance? And finally, how can all of this be done in an autonomous manner? So that, that's, these are the, the key research questions that drive uh, our work in this uh, theme. Um, yeah, so now, now I'm going to take you through the key research activities that we have been doing to answer these uh, research questions. Now, before we get into the, the prediction of uh, network be behavior, we first need to understand um, the, the, the behavior um, um, itself. Now, Manuel has been working on developing algorithms that help, uh, help us um, understand network behavior and detect deviations from what we can understand to be normal performance. You heard some of the activities about anomaly detection and so on um, from um, Idris. So there are some overlaps between our work and Idris's work. 
Um, so for instance, we have been um, developing um, um, techniques you borrowed from um, network science and statistical techniques such as graph Fourier transforms and matrix profile, whereby we can analyze data about the entire network and detect um, anomalies. So here the, the focus really of our work is looking at looking at the, the network um, 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 on top of looking at individual assets in the network. So the diagram that you see on the top left um, shows a graph Fourier transform and the matrix profile of the throughput data across the network for 24 hours. And you can see some red marks in, in that diagram. These are showing us the anomalous points that our algorithm has detected. That, that these are the points where the throughput uh, that we see at that point in time does not conform with what it has seen, what we have seen earlier until this point in time. Now, the beauty of this technique is that by, by inverting the graph Fourier transform, mathematically inverting it, uh, it back into the time-space domain, we can see which particular nodes um, um, are, are is showing the, the deviation from, from normal behavior at that time. And uh, you can see that in the top right uh, diagram. If you zoom into that particular node, we can see that there is actually a, a wide fluctuation in the, in the throughput that, uh, that we see from that particular node. Um, so, so we can we can now use this understanding to to simulate uh, network behavior and start performing scenario analysis. So, so that's the the work um, that Manuel is leading um, on this network simulation tool that that we can see in the, the bottom left uh, two two pictures there. So, so Manuel has developed this simulation tool that allows us to understand the impact of uh, such anomalies on network performance and customer service. Now, with this simulation tool, we can also now start asking questions such as, what will happen if we performance, uh, perform a maintenance activity? What, what will happen if we don't do anything? What, what uh, impact will it have on uh, the service perf uh, um, performance? What will happen if we add redundancy to the network? Which are the critical nodes in the network and how can we therefore prioritize our interventions? Now, the issue of uh, understanding the, the dynamic nature of node criticality is uh, one that one of our PhD students, Yanev, has been looking at over the last couple of years. Now, on the right-hand side, you can see uh, uh, our work on extending this work on understanding network performance to predicting network uh, performance and predicting particularly failures within the infrastructure assets within the network. Now the top graph, top two a uh, couple of graphs uh, that you can see in the in the slide, is about a machine learning technique that Gishen, one of our ex PhD students, developed um, to combine um, telemetry data and expert knowledge to predict broadband line failures. Now this this tackles one of the uh, fundamental problems in machine learning that. In order to have a good machine learning algorithm um, to, uh, trained very well to, to predict failures, for instance, we need a lot of data that represents not only good behavior of the network, but also that represents failures. Now, thankfully, our network and our assets do not fail that often, which um, on, on the flip side, it means that for us to train our, uh, our machine learning algorithms, we don't have enough failure data to train with. So this the technique that merges data as well as knowledge. So we take engineering knowledge about how the, the, the network behaves, about the asset behaves and so on, and use that engineering knowledge to, to develop augmented data sets that increases the amount of data that we have in order to train our algorithms. And, and, and we, we can see, we have seen that in this case, um, as well as in other use cases as well, that it, it greatly enhances the pred prediction performance uh, in terms of predicting failures. Now, um, a success story out of this is that Gishan has now um, uh, finished his PhD and set up a company that uh, offers this technique as its uh, as a USB. So that's a, a great impact story for the project. Um, the bottom graph uh, in, in this slide, it shows Rishi's work on using market basket analysis uh, that is used uh, commonly in re recommender systems and so on to predict critical alarms over the RAN network. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because uh, you'll see more about this. You'll hear about his work uh, in the afternoon session. Now, um, Understanding and uh, predicting network behavior is um, it's not of much use um, unless we actually do something about it. Um, so we, we need to decide what intervention, say maintenance or replacement, to make on which asset at what time, right? Um, now the key here is to note that um, to make sure that um, we, we, we deliver our service to customers, 
we can't just simply focus on optimizing decisions about individual assets. This is because um, service delivery really depends on the performance of the that that interconnected network of assets. So what this means is that if we um, if we develop a, a optimal plan for intervening to one of the assets in the network, that may be optimal for that asset, but not optimal for other assets in the network, and hence uh, optimal uh, not be optimal for the network performance. So we are moving from optimizing the maintenance of individual nodes to looking at the entire network and determining the best plan that balances the cost, risk, and performance across that, that network. Um, now, if you think about this, this um, you will immediately realize that this can quickly become a monstrous problem because we have thousands of nodes across the network and so on. So one of our researchers, Eliona, has been working very closely with uh, uh, Marco uh, and has been exploring distributed decision-making approaches to enable these, these, the assets across the network to make decisions autonomously by communicating perhaps with, with other assets in the network, and in essence, working together as a, as a team. So the assets working together as a team. Um, here she's also focusing on joining up the decisions that we make in maintenance and network traffic management. So this allows, for instance, uh, to redirect network traffic based on the risks arising across the network and before we carry out any, any maintenance activity. So, so the impact on the service to customer is minimized. Now you'll see uh, some of this work also this, this afternoon in one of the demonstrator rooms. Um, now, the, the, the idea of um, autonomous assets um, extends our traditional view of digital twins to, to make them active participants in the, in the decision-making process instead of just being passive informants of uh, network behavior. So we have, um, we, we have developed techniques um, uh, for assets to share data and knowledge between each other, to collaboratively learn and predict failures, and also how assets can work together to share, share their load based on their condition to, to, to minimize system disruptions. So this links with what I said in the previous slide as well. Um, when we decide to reroute network traffic, if we need a maintenance to be carried out, we need to ensure that the traffic load is shared in a way that it, is, it, it doesn't overload certain nodes and cause even more disruption to, to uh, network uh, performance. So this part of our activity is looking at how assets and the, the digital twins of the assets or the intelligent digital twins of these assets can communicate with one another, collaborate and cooperate with, with one another in, a, in order to drive these decisions and take these actions forward. Now, um, you might th be thinking now that we, we are working on a lot of mathematical things and algorithmic things, but yes, uh, we are doing that, but we are not only just working on the algorithmic side of things. Um, so Marco has, been spent, uh, has spent the last three, four years leading our work on the architecture side of things, um, look, focusing on how to develop such um, autonomous capability, uh, especially through the, the use of software agents. So the key questions that we are answering in this um, uh, part of our work is, for instance, how should the design of such agents look like? What should the agent's capabilities be? Um, how can intents be translated and implemented by these agents? What should the, the architecture of the ecosystems, uh, ecosystem of agents um, look like? Should assets be communicating peer-to-peer -peer with each other and making autonomous decisions? Or is it more effective um, to have a supervisory controller, kind of a hierarchical uh, um, way of uh, um, organizing these, these agents um, that can make decisions? So the supervisory um, um, controller agent can make decisions on behalf of a collection of assets a, a sub-network of assets or a type of um, um, assets. What are the cost, performance, and resilience trade-off of different kinds of architecture? So we are looking at peer-to-peer -peer architecture, we are looking at hierarchical archi uh, architectures, heterarchical architectures, and so on. So different kinds of, different ways in which we can organize these, this ecosystem of agents will uh, give rise to different kinds of costs, different kinds of um, additional information overload on the network and so on. So we need to make these architectural decisions very carefully. Uh, and again, you will hear more about this from Marco um, in the afternoon session. So, so that, 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 that was a summary of the work that we have been doing over the last uh, three, four um, uh, years. Um, now to move on to quickly give, uh, to give you an overview of the demonstrators that we have uh, in store for you this, this afternoon. 
Um, in room two, uh, prognostics for service assurance. Uh, Rishi has prepared a, de a demonstration of the work that he did on the RAN network um, to predict uh, critical alarms based on the, the market basket analysis technique that I mentioned earlier. Um, in the same room, um, we also have uh, a demonstration from Manuel on the network simulation and uh, infrastructure management tool that he uh, has uh, had, uh, has developed. So this is the one that we, I, I mentioned earlier that allows us to do scenario analysis. So one of the things that you will see is um, how the, the network performance and the, uh, the congestion and the queues across the network changes based on whether we have a redundancy across the network or we have uh, as just a single layer of, of nodes across the network. Um, and in room 3A, uh, intent-based networking, asset management, um, Harris mentioned this, uh, Marco and Eliona have uh, prepared a demonstration of how autonomous agents can be used to optimize the maintenance and operation of the network. So this touches upon the work that I, I mentioned uh, on maintenance optimization um, uh, from Eliona, but also the, the intent-based work, the, the agent-based work that um, Marco has been working on. Um, the final slide, finally, well, I, I want you to think about a few issues uh, for discussion this afternoon. Um, so if, uh, you, you can see them um, there. Um, so, so some of the things that we might want to discuss is what does serve service assurance mean um, uh, to you? So what are the goals and the metrics? Um, what are the disruptions and interventions that we should be thinking about? What are the use cases? Uh, you, you, you've seen some of the use cases that I presented here. The, the, the broadband line failure prediction, the, the RAN network um, alarm prediction and so on. What other use cases in your field of work um, uh, do you think we can actually work on um, across the different research activities that I, that I, I just explained and, and the demos that you can see uh, in the afternoon? Um, what are the pathways to adoption? How do we work more closely with you over the next year or so and beyond as well? Um, to, 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 to downstream some of these research activities into operational practice. Um, I, I do understand that a lot of our work is at an early stage TRL level, early TRL level, fundamental research, and there's a journey that we have to go through in, before we see some of this in, in, uh, um, done in practice. What are these act, uh, things that we have to keep in mind? And finally, what are the new problems that we should be focusing on within this, this theme? I explained some of the research questions and ideas that we are exploring, but what other things can we actually do uh, meaningfully um, together? So that, that brings to the end of my um, talk. Uh, thanks a lot for, for listening. Um, I'll hand back over to Paul.